Dunn has come for. Williams has a sight of goal, but the hit counts in the wall. Williams goes in again. Dowie. And now Elstrup. And Kingsley Black. A player who was getting more and more in on the act in the first half has given the first half a goal. David White, looking for Quinn again, great save, Maxson, Ward, brought down Wilsey, yes, Roddy Whelan's challenge, and after a long, long look, the referee awards Manchester City a penalty, and Mark Ward, who gave up the penalty-taking responsibilities against Leeds, only to return to the job after Alan Harper had missed, has a really important one here. Oh, and he's good enough, just. Virtually drilled it through Grobola. Beers' corner, Hussein's header, John Barnes. Flick from the inrush. Liverpool on terms. Barnes is shot, turned in by the head of Ian Rush. With just eight minutes to spare. Barnes on towards Rush. Brightwell has only played it into the path of Ronnie Rosenthal. Great chance for the substitute. He may just have stolen the game. It used to be David Fairclub, didn't it? Ronnie Rosenthal's the super sub today. Mark Ward, maybe. Oh, and Grobler had to make a good save. Ward found a way through. But in stoppage time, Bruce Grobler denied him. One last chance, maybe, for Manchester City. Quinn's header, it's in! Now Quinn has saved it! Arsenal, the only other team yet to suffer defeat this season, went behind at Queen's Park Rangers when Tony Adams lost patience with Roy Wegley's meanderings and conceded a fairly needless penalty. Wegley's kick was the first goal conceded by David Seaman in seven games. Wegley's 12th of the season. Arsenal's goals, three in the last 12 minutes, lacked the style of their overall performance, which delighted George Graham. Adams had a crack, Smith was in there, Merson it was who made sure. Their second, and the goal that really knocked the stuffing out of Rangers, was the best of the three. Nigel Winterburn down the left, Kevin Campbell uh, involved, Alan Smith turning smartly for his third in two games. It was Rangers 50 feet in a row. Kevin Campbell, Arsenal sub, made the most of David Barnsley's slip-up. 15 goals conceded in five games, Rangers. At the moment, they're the First Division's four guys. Bobby Campbell, the Chelsea manager, chose to go to Spurs yesterday and was convinced of a double handball for goal number one. Stewart there in controlling the initial pass, then Lineker before scoring. Culverhouse, Bowen and Crook were all returning to White Hart Lane with Norwich and it was Crook who came up with the equaliser, catching Torsved napping and adding to Terry Venable's belief that Spurs should never have sold him in the first place. Tottenham's winner was a Lineker classic. The early ball, Stewart's header, Gary doing the rest with an economy of effort and maximum style. An old goal of Willie Donachy vintage after 30 seconds. One of the quickest on record in the first division gave Southampton the lead. Richard Shaw and Nigel Martin on totally different wavelengths. Goes down as just one of those things. But the thing about Palace is their ability to overcome setbacks. Steve Coppel's side is tremendous character and he's delighted with the way they're playing at the moment. Ian Wright bang on form with the equaliser and the first of three goals in a five-minute spell. 
right second was a beauty and a real contrast in style to the first. Jeff Thomas powering through and setting up right for his tenth of the season. A minute later, Southampton were back on level terms. Paul Rideout taking Mickey Adams' cross on his chest and knocking the ball in with his studs. One goal was to settle it after the break, not the prettiest you'll ever see, and one the Saint is likely to discard on the first ballot, but Mark Bright from close range gave Palace their fourth away win. When Lee Chapman scores first, Leeds United tend to win. Gordon Strachan and Carl Shutt inevitably involved in the build-up. Agrizovic prevented it being a classic, but Chapman's instincts made it a very satisfying striker's goal. But on this occasion, Leeds couldn't capitalise on the advantage, their winning streak coming to an end when Chris Fairclough dillied and dallied, and Kevin Gallagher earned Terry Butcher his first point as Coventry's player-manager. All of a sudden, it's home sweet home for Wimbledon. They won at Plough Lane for the first time last week and found Everton fairly easy victims this time around. Warren Barton's precise header was his first for the club since his £300,000 move from Maidstone. Wimbledon played some good football, actually, and outplayed Everton. That was Barton's long cross to McGee, whose cross-in found Gibson totally unmarked and Everton in total disarray. Little Terry's second in successive games once again proved decisive because Everton scored before the end. Sheedy's free kick led to Roger Joseph conceding a penalty. And Sheedy's next effort from closer range was about the most decisive thing Everton produced all afternoon. Forest normally win these East Midlands derbies, so it was no surprise when they went in front. Steve Chettle scoring for the second successive Saturday. So for Derby to turn things round, it meant they had to score twice in a game for only the second time this season. But Gary Micklewhite was contributing well down the right, and substitute Craig Ramage came up with an equaliser three minutes later. Derby's winner on the hour is a real contender for goal of the day. Micklewhite on the run and sending over an inviting cross that Dean Saunders dispatched brilliantly. His eighth of the season, none better. If you don't score, you don't win games. Sheffield United have now gone six without, and they're still the only side in the league without a win. What's more, when you commit Harry Carey in the last quarter of the game, in the last quarter of the pitch, you don't deserve to win. Marco Gabbiadini putting Sunderland in front after 70 minutes, although Peter Davenport did look suspiciously offside. But from Sheffield United's point of view, the worst was yet to come. Paul Beasley, the culprit. Gabbiadini, again the executioner. Sunderland's first away win. Embarrassment for Beasley and Sheffield United. But they're going forward now with Townsend in possession. Wise. And it's sliced off Pallister for an own goal. Jury went in with Pallister. And Bobby Campbell doesn't really care whose shin it went off because Chelsea have taken the lead. Oh, nice play by Lasso. And not a bad ball either. Bruce just about cut it out as Dixon was threatening to run onto it. Here's Phelan straight away under pressure. And Townsend's done brilliantly for Chelsea here. He's going alone. Oh, what a marvellous goal! Andy Townsend scores a beauty! Well, you feel that United have to get a goal now, Alan, because they're putting uh, Chelsea under quite a bit of pressure here. They need to get one. Let's see if they can. Pallister climbing high again. Oh, and somehow Wallace got there. And the smallest man in the penalty area got the head of the counted. And it's raining goals at Old Trafford now. Great ball, though, from Ince to Wallace. And Hughes wants it played first time into the box. And Hughes gets the ball he wanted and equalises for Manchester United. Brilliant cross by Wallace. 20 points from 13 games, but under pressure here from young Stewart. Wilson, back it goes to Stewart. 
That's a run into Webb, and the referee has given a penalty. Webb can't believe it, and I'm not certain either. But anyway, the referee, Mr Ashworth, was certain, and young Graham Stewart has earned Chelsea a lifeline with this penalty. Well, was he going to cross his path? Was that a deliberate foul by Webb? are in front again you can see the beads of perspiration even on a cold day on Bobby Campbell's face